Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to talk about inflation, which doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So we're going to give you some of our tips and tricks on how you can better navigate it. So as I said in the opening intro, it doesn't really seem like inflation's going anywhere. Oh, it's going somewhere. Yeah. Tell them how much you filled up the, uh, uh, how much gas cost today. I thought I blocked that out of my memory. Uh, <laughs> I went to the pump and it was a dollar, one eighty two nine, dollar and eighty nine. For a liter. For a liter. Gas. Yeah. So for my friends in the States, you guys will have to do the conversion for that. Or maybe I'll put a little handy footnote there so you have an idea of how much that would cost per gallon. But I've <laughs> never seen prices like that. No. Like in our lifetime. And, you know, most of what we're going to talk to you about today is going to be food. Because, I mean, it's all well and good for us to say, you know, drive the smaller vehicle, carpool, maybe don't do a lot of extra expenditures right now. But the one thing nobody can avoid is eating, right? And so people are really being hit hard with the grocery budget. And there's not really a lot you can do to not spend money on groceries. People you gotta need, eat. People got to eat. So we're going to give you some of the things that we've been doing to help navigate this. Um, and first and foremost, the one thing that we do every single week, and we're really diligent about this, is we plan out our meals. And I think meal planning is really an underutilized tool when it comes to saving money. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's less stressful for the person making the food, too. You don't have to come up with a new plan. But, you know, when you meal plan prior to a grocery shop, then you shop for the meals you know you're going to make, right? That's it, exactly. And one of the things that we've started doing too um, in all of this was we started buying our groceries online and you would just go swing by on the way home, open up your trunk, groceries slide in and it's great. And you really like that for one reason. I don't buy impulse junk food. Right? <laughs> so when you go to the grocery store with a list, one, hopefully it'll prevent you from buying extra things that you don't need that are just going to rot or go bad in your fridge. There's nothing... nobody, nobody sticks to just the list. Like, you, yeah, you, you walk up and down the aisles and you're like, ooh, that's a new flavor of potato chip or whatever. And you just start, <laughs> gra you just start grabbing, right? But I mean, we started, we started ordering online um, just because, you know, during the beginning of all this, there was limits in the grocery store. So it was just more convenient for me to just go and pick it up. You know, we'll pay the extra three bucks, whatever. Um, I mean, there are some downsides. We don't get to, we don't, we're not the ones handpicking the produce. So sometimes, you know, it's not what you would have picked or whatever. But the fact that we don't go in there and end up with five, six, ten other things in the cart that we didn't really plan on, but it was straight impulse purchase, you know, it's a benefit. But I think the meal planning comes in handy too, because even some of your impulse purchases might be healthy. Like, oh, look, sure. they've got kale on sale. I'll grab that bunch of beets. And then it turns out you didn't actually yeah. have a plan for any of that food. Right. I can't wait. Right? I can't wait to buy this so it goes bad in the fridge. That's it. And so meal planning. And then if you choose to shop online, those are two areas that can really help you. Um, another thing that I really strongly recommend, and I was just talking to my sister about this over the weekend, is have what I call a pantry budget. It can be $6. It can be $10. Make it a small amount that you can tack on to every grocery shop. So if you can spend an extra $10 on things like canned beans, um, rice, a, a can of tuna, and that stuff is destined for your pantry. It's not going anywhere else. It's not a part of your meal plan. And so every time you shop, you're adding just a few more of those essential items, ideally items that are not too expensive, but still give you that complete protein. Right? Yeah. I mean, I, you know what, now that you say that, I guess the one downside of of doing the online shopping is, you know, we don't see those things that are on sale that we maybe wouldn't have purchased. Right? Yeah, you so, do. You do? He never does the shopping I online. Just... Everything's always on sale. That's actually my next point is to shop sales. They tell you when stuff's on sale online. It's oh, great. really? Yeah. So whenever I see things like butter go on sale, because we buy organic butter, it's really expensive. And I hear non-organic butter is really pricey right now too. Mm. I buy two. And then I chuck one, well, 
gently placed <laughs> one in the freezer because butter freezes really well. I've done the same thing with our son's tofu. He really likes tofu. I try to limit how much soy he gets. So the, the ones that we buy, the sprouted organic non-GMO tofu is actually expensive. So when it goes on sale, I buy a bunch and I freeze it right in the package. The texture changes a little bit, but not a lot. So yeah. shopping sales can really help as well. So when some of your favorite items go on sale, pick up a few extra, as long as it's storable things, things that are in cans or something that you can freeze. Another area that we've become really big fans of is buying in bulk, mm. right? What kind of things do we buy in bulk? <laughs> uh, rice, beans, oats, chocolate chips, we have a problem. <laughs> We don't have that much of a uh, Well, problem. I mean, like, you know, we don't, well. Sweeteners? When you have a giant bag of chocolate chips in your pantry, it's too easy to go and grab small half. I, don't, I mean, I don't do that. I'm just saying. I, I'm starting to wonder if this is why he's getting up at 3 a.m. <laughs> and, not, and not to use the loo. Um, but we a lot of sweeteners, so I'll do like coconut sugar, honey. I buy honey in bulk. Things that it will store, obviously. That's like, you know. Yeah. And, th and things that you eat, right? Like, it's very easy to very easy to go into like preparation mode for inflation or for whatever and just start stocking up on anything yeah you know but if you're not used to eating it or don't plan on eating it why it's just a giant waste of money right oh cooking oils vinegar mm -hmm. those are the kinds of things that we buy in bulk and so when we're purchasing for more long-term storage i will use mylar bags and so these are actually oats that we because i bought about 50 pounds of oats. I didn't quite realize what I was getting myself into. So I packaged these ago. in 2017. And so in the Mylar bags, they, they're going to store really, really well. But um, another option is getting like food grade containers. So this has got our, our chickpeas in it. And so I'll buy in bulk because for two reasons. One, accessibility. Um, where we live, we often can't find a lot of organic options. Like if I want to buy dried chickpeas, my grocery store only has conventional. They don't have organic. Whereas um, I go through a company called Organic Matters. I believe my folks in, uh, down south in the States, you guys actually have more options than we do. But I go through Organic Matters Foods and I put it in order maybe three times a year. So it's expensive on the offset and you do have to pay for shipping. Um, but I end up, it lasts us a really long time and the price per unit is actually quite a bit cheaper. I also sometimes will go through Costco. We've been able to get things like cashews, um, figs, some of the crackers kiddo likes, um, you know, at lower prices by buying in bulk. Um, well, so I mean, and you gotta think about it, right? Like prices, anyone who's kept track of prices, which you do when you're an adult is mm -hmm. they've just gone up. Right, so the fact that you bought those oats in 2017, I guarantee you today's price is not the same. No. Right? And it's gonna be more expensive. So buying in bulk, you know, it's great because uh, one, you have it, uh, two, you, if you can store it. Yeah. But, you know, you kind of secure those prices that seem to be going only one way, which is up, right? So it's like anything you buy now, chances are in the near future, it's going to be more expensive. I think everything is kind of pointing to that, right? Yeah, that seems to be at least the trend that we've been noticing with most food items. Um, so again, if you can afford it and also pay attention to shipping costs. I, that's the last time I put in an, an order with Organic Matters. I really noticed an increase in price and shipping, but that's because fuel costs fuel. are going up, right? Yeah. So do your math, you know, um, figure out if it is cheaper for you to buy maybe from your local natural health food store versus online versus Costco versus your grocery store, right? So. Um, really kind of break down those costs and try to get the unit cost um, because sometimes buying a larger quantity isn't always cheaper. It used to be, but that is changing as well. Um, one thing that I'm planning on doing as I've started homeschooling and I run a business and I manage our home, I've gotten a little lazy <laughs> with things that I used to make myself. Yeah. So I'm going to start going back to doing things like making granola myself. My son really likes granola and the box that I just bought was $7.99. I guarantee you, and it's organic, it's got you know good ingredients, it's one of the reasons why it's so expensive, but I guarantee you I can make it for cheaper. Mm -hmm. Also like kombucha, we have a bit of a kombucha habit and I've gotten out of the habit of making kombucha because I got busy. 
Um, things like baking your own bread, making your own muffins. Look at those snack foods that you're buying for kids' lunches. Those are expensive, like a box of granola bars and those kinds of things. So anywhere where you can kind of make items yourself at home for cheaper than you would buy, I highly recommend doing that. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. And then the last one um, is kind of, it's kind of like two suggestions in one. Um, one of the things that I'm hearing that's really gone up in price is meat. And I hear that from my sister. My uh, brother-in-law is a meat manager at a grocery store and he's talking about it all the time and also how difficult it is to find certain cuts. Um, so as former vegetarians, we're actually pretty accustomed to making some really delicious vegetarian meals. There's lots of things you can substitute for your protein, right? But there's sometimes that, let's take like a, a nice like Thai curry, for example, right? It mm -hmm. could have, it could have chicken in it or it could not. And realistically, you know, uh, you're tasting, you're not tasting the chicken, you're tasting, if you're the, flavors, you're tasting the curry yeah. sauce, you got your spices and your flavors and your rice and you have some other types of protein in there like chickpeas or beans or whatever yeah you, you know you'll miss it because you are used to having the meat in there but it's just fine it is and i think you know start looking at those cuisines that sort of specialize in vegetarian meals things like indian food thai food um, you'll get some really great inspiration on items you can add or alternatively if this idea is like i'm not eating vegetarian mm. start looking at your local farmers Yep. Their prices haven't gone up yet. <laughs> I was talking to my sister about that too. Now, when fuel costs go up, it's going to mean um, feed costs are going to go up. So it's possible in the next year or so, you're going to start to see that trickle down with your local farmers. But right now, I can guarantee you, if we go down the road to the Amish or to Ray's, we're going to be able to buy a steak, if that's what you're looking for, or you know, uh, some bacon or whatever it is you might be after. I'm going to be able to find better quality there and cheaper than what's at the grocery store. So if the idea of adding in vegetarian meals seems a little overwhelming... Um, we're not saying... We're not saying ditch meat and go vegetarian. We're just saying, no. we're saying you know, it, it maybe it doesn't have to be with every meal because uh, one availability and price may may cause you to make that switch anyway, right? And it's really, yes. I mean, it's just really not that scary. No, it's not. Um, but it, you also seek out those local farms because, like I said, those prices really haven't gone up yet. Yeah. Um, so I can't believe we. You just brought this up. We were about to film the closing. And what did we forget to talk about? Grow your own food. <laughs> Which is hilarious because we have a fruit tree orchard. We have all the medicinal herbs here, plus a giant vegetable garden. You didn't even make a list. I didn't know oh, it was on my list. I think maybe because I sort of thought it to be one of those obvious ones. Maybe. No, I mean, there's lots of, there's lots of people that... I mean, for whatever reason, no yeah. judgment, right? Don't, no. don't, don't uh, attempt to grow some of your own food. But I think, you know, uh, how many times are you going to go to the grocery store uh, and pay an astronomical amount for something that you really could produce in your in your backyard? Granted, it, there's a time commitment. Yep. Um, but it's an extremely rewarding and satisfying endeavor, and you know, it's a it's a massive cost savings. Like you have to think, you know, you buy a package of seeds. Mm -hmm. has 40 seeds in it that's 40 pepper plants you know what i mean that you're obviously not going to grow that many but um it's a lot because a little three cell or three pepper package uh conventional peppers of you know yeah not not, not the organic ones right it's 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 seven eight bucks yeah yeah that's crazy yeah. And even if the idea of like starting seeds, you're like, oh, whoa, back up the train here. Okay. <laughs> like that seems overwhelming. Even if you buy seedlings, you're still going to come out oh, yeah. ahead in cost. Oh, yeah. Right now, I mean, your most difficult thing might be lumber costs. So price out different options. You might be able to find um, some other ways to grow. I know lots of folks who grow in things like Rubbermaid totes and that kind of thing. So obviously look into whether they leach, you know, do yeah, your you research. Don't, you, don't, you don't need acreage to grow food. You don't. You don't. Um, and it might be, especially if, consider all of your upfront costs, building your garden boxes, buying your soil to be sort of long-term commitments. Right. And then when you're looking at how much your food actually costs, that's where you look into your seeds and your seedlings. Yeah. Not to mention it's, I mean, when you start, you know, eating your own food, 
it's extremely rewarding. It, it really it, is. It really is, right? Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, we could even go into, um, not to overwhelm, but learning how to preserve a lot of that food. Even if all you're doing is vacuum sealing it and chucking it in the freezer. Like um, two nights ago, we ate a dinner in February. Oh, it's March now in Ontario. Completely homegrown. Mm -hmm. The beets were ours. The beans were ours. The chicken was ours. All raised on this property. Mm -hmm. It was just a couple of the spices and things. So it is possible to eat a lot of your own food all throughout the year. So you can look into things like canning, dehydrating, and freezing as well. So I think we got everything this time. I think so. Okay. Um, so hopefully you guys found this helpful. I know times are a little unnerving and prices just seem to keep going up and up. So hopefully some of our suggestions and tips will help alleviate some of the burden for you guys. Also, if you have any suggestions, yeah, comment, leave those below. Let us know because we're always looking for ways to become more self-sufficient and of course to live life a little easier on the budget. So uh, until next time, this is Corinne and Paul from Spirea Herbs wishing you health and wellness. Gonna talk about planting some food. Oh yeah, let's do that now. How do we not talk about that? We have a fucking huge okay, garden. Sh All right, ready. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much trimming I have to do. What a pain. Okay. No, that's staying. Um.